Hello everybody and a happy new year from me to you and it's time for the fifth episode of season two of MotoGP 15 and uh, Assen in the Netherlands is our uh, location for this championship round and uh, as you uh, I hope you saw the last episode, but if you didn't, a little bit of a spoiler. I won the race comfortably, so uh, you may as well check out the episode now if you didn't. But uh, if you're here and ready to watch some Aston action, then uh, you're in the right place. Um, the championship standings, if you missed them, um, we'll just take a quick look at them now. Um, the top four is all you really need to care about. And now I'm in third place in the World Championship in Moto2. It's Johan Zarco, just four points clear of Sam Lowe's, so if I can uh, exploit his uh, you know, sort of vulnerability in this round, I'll be in a very, very healthy position. However, uh, Aston is a track I've only been to once, that was of course in Moto3, so it could be a struggle compared to how I did in uh, Catalonia. So uh, let's just get straight into the uh, qualifying results. And believe it or not, I've gotten pole position yet again. I've been struggling all session long in the, uh, in the rain, pouring rain, yet I've still managed to pull out a lap of the gods beating Johan Zarka by two tenths of a second. Uh, Sam Laws is in third, Tito Abat in fourth there. Alex Rins, after a great Catalonian race, starts fifth. Folger, Sam, Simeon, Luti, Morbidelli and Calio complete the top ten. And then a few other guys uh, will be fighting for the minor points. And then down at the bottom, you've got some of the uh, usual suspects. But uh, I'm hopeful for a nice clean race here at Aston. And it is time for the race day. The rain hasn't fully... Uh, disappeared but the uh, track remains wet uh, air temperature and uh, air and track temperature are still good and the speed of the wind is five kilometers an hour facing northeast so now my pole position is on the line here can I convert it into a win with the damp track it's go 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 for the Netherlands MotoGP and it looks to be an ominous star Sam Lowe's Burst into the lead inside the first corner and now we break for the right hander going downhill and there's um that's Folger I think going for my inside as well but not to be I block going out onto the Astro turf and the main championship protagonists have given themselves a great opportunity to pull away from me I need to find my way back into this race now for the uh, end of the complex the very tricky left hander one of the slowest corners in the championship and now for a long straight down to uh, the first sector line I have a good gap over Jonas Folger but it's Zarco and Lowe's dominating the way so far this is my favorite corner now breaking fourth gear with a slight dab of the accelerator again and then you go left but again it looks like these two guys are going to be dominant I need to do my very best to keep up hitting first gear by accident really there um, Folger still keeping uh, me honest here he could do do with the podium the uh, young German now we accelerate for left and right again now uh, again it's very very slow you have to be careful not to accelerate too soon here else you'll wobble and again I'm keeping uh, my regulate I'm regulating my uh, throttle use there now for another sweeping right I've lost a lot of time on Zarco but this is where I gain a lot of it the AI tends to break here going as flat out as I can again ducking to the left and braking for the uh, left hander before the uh, famous chicane you'll remember in real life Valentino Rossi and Marc Marquez uh, dueling it out here and uh, Marquez actually ran wide but now it's San Lowe's back in the lead Zarco trying to keep him uh, you know in check I've gained a lot of time on them and pulled away from Folger. It could be a three-way dance and I back into the rear of Sam Lowe's bike. That was poor for me. I've lost a few uh, seconds there, but we catch up very quickly. And now uh, Rabat and Folger having a little duel uh, back in the distance. Um, there you go, trying to stay on the bike with the uh, right-hander. And you can see this is where it's very, very hard to gain time because you get it wrong. These two guys will just accelerate away from you. And uh, this is just a very tricky challenge. Aston wasn't my favourite track uh, in Moto3. I didn't do too well here. But I'm just trying to keep these guys uh, in check. I'm pushing hard now on the second lap as we fast forward. Now back to real time. There you go. Look at the amount of time I've gained. I've really gone for it now. But I'm way off the racing line. And that gives Zarco the opportunity he needs to take the lead. He's on the outside line, which will be the inside as soon as they switch and that could be the lead for the Frenchman now they've t 
taken time out of each other and I have a slim chance of catching but due to the damp surface I just can't quite get the power down we fast forward again I make another error and that's resulted in a time penalty so if I'm going to win this race I'll need to pull out a gap but you can see how quick these guys are on the back straight braking late again for that other corner if you if you're really brave you can take it flat out but now I've got an opportunity down the inside but I break very early trying to put Zarko off it hasn't worked and then we pull away again but Zarko has been doing a great job here he's really in the worst position being uh, attacked and being an attacker at the same time it's not at all comfortable he now takes the overall lead from the Britain now we push again seven tenths of a second behind nearly touching lows again and there we go another bit of contact but you can see my bike is struggling to keep up in the uh, fast sections but it's the slow sections I stand a reasonable chance and then you can see it again uh, good keep pace keeping there but it's just a matter of you know I have to find um, a patch of the track where I am clearly better now this might be my opportunity I go way out onto the the uh, tarmac there keeping flat out here braking Sam Lowe's is slow I go for the inside I'm into second but I've hit Zarko and unfortunately that was again another case of late braking from me and I don't gain any positions with two laps to go we have to make something work and fast this is a new lap record for Zarko but you'll see in a moment it actually belongs to me I was the quickest that lap there you go 143.7 and it's such an exciting battle here look at everyone else they can hardly keep up it's just the three-way duel it's a 143.7 as I said and I have to pull that one out of the bag again if I'm gonna stand a chance it's Lowe's methodically thinking about what to do next he is the man in the uncomfortable position I give him yet more uh, sort of love taps and now we, they accelerate away again that slipstream is so beneficial if you can hang on to it and there you go the other guy's just three seconds back that's insane for just five laps in a motorcycle race now this is my last chance to really make this corner count here we go contact with Lowe's again I would have been through if I hadn't have hit him but he was in my way and now it's a three three wide into the penultimate chicane here we go can I make a count yes I do lead briefly but Zarko is going to power through again it's the final lap Lowe's it must be furious he now goes me inside I can't do much about it and he I've lost second place so quickly it's another track record for me this is really my last chance now I must get it together no that's a bad corner that's a terrible corner just like in a previous round this season I make a poor entry into the corner I've lost a lot of time the most time I've lost for laps really now we have to gain it all back with worn tires and the track is starting to dry out a little bit it's five tenths of a second and uh, as long as I stay on the bike I'm guaranteed a podium but I don't want to fall any further back in the championship it's Johan Zarko leading keeping his uh, lead intact here but he has to be absolutely flawless eight tenths of a second is my deficit I have to find a way back in just about six corners give or take it's going to be a long way back but can I get my number 75 into second or better I've never finished second in the career mode before it's either first or third and it looks to be the same old situation this is the final sector coming up now it's a really really big gap to make up over a second I have to go completely flat out here watch my uh, throttle it stays it's absolutely oh it's pedal to the metal stuff but it's not close enough it looks like Johan Zarko will win here today but can he survive until the final chicane I'm very close now they are slow into that corner those has defended though it's Zarko to win a terrific race but it ends in a rather uh, underwhelming result I felt I could have come second there but a mistake on the last lap has cost me but either way I had that penalty and I was actually four tenths of a second behind as opposed to three but Zarko 
was the top rider today and uh, Lowe's can only come second. Rabat, Fulger, Rins, Morbidelli, Luti, Calio, Simeon, Cortesi, Corsi, Simon, Siharan and Nakagami are your point scorers and the uh, best of the rest are below but Luis Rossi in the Tech 3 was the only non-classified which is a pity you want to see everybody finish the race. Now the World Championship for Moto2 looks like this. It's Zarco 158 points, Lowe's 9 points back and then I drop to 20 points uh, worse off and now you can see 20 riders have world championship points so I kind of feel hard done by there I really want to be closer in the championship but Calex and Speedup are the strongest manufacturers and uh, we can only uh, tolerate third place with 138 points for Tech 3 Suter still have not for their efforts and uh, there's my experience I'm up to level 58 which is absolutely crazy considering I'm not even close to MotoGP action yet. So we'll uh, just skip the uh, countdown timer and we see we've 321,000 fans and 629,000 credits. That could be enough for an elite bike, but should I risk it in, uh, in my bid to uh, make MotoGP or should I save my money, stay on the Tech 3 and get a great bike for MotoGP should I be promoted? Uh, that's the way it goes sometimes you'll be outclassed once every now and again but uh, what a race that was some of the best artificial intelligence versus human racing you're ever likely to see in a video game but um, I have to tip my hat to Zarko and Lowe's they were so so good but uh, it does feel like a bitter pill to swallow that I've now fallen 20 points back on the Frenchman despite me being so much better than likes of Tito Robat and Alex Rins but uh, Sam Lowe's has been complimentary as he usually seems to be. He was uh, proud to have beaten me, but uh, I'll be back next time, according to him. And uh, Harman reveals the secret of his success. I study the best trajectories by playing MotoGP 15, so I like that from the developers, fair play. Um, in terms of MotoGP itself, I think Marc Marquez was the winner, so he closed the gap on Rossi, Lorenzo and Pedrosa, the only real threats to the crown there. Um, Moto3, it's Quattararo 29 points back on Kent, Vasquez and Oliveira the only other real contenders there as well but it's Moto2 where you want to be for championship action. Rabat falls 28 points back but I'll need to uh, pick myself up straight away and catch up to Lowe's and Zarco um, and the next race will be in Germany so we'll skip that and head straight to Indianapolis uh, for the next episode. But until next time, I hope you enjoyed and uh, I hope 2016 is a great year for everybody and they hope, I hope you achieve what you need to achieve and I'll speak to you again soon, okay? Bye!